So occasionally I get asked how to uh, create some videos from, uh, particularly from groundwater flow models. That's what I work on most of the time. So here's an example of uh, flow model. This is just like simulated water level from, uh, from a mod flow model. And um, I, I tend to use Visit for these type of uh, animations. And um, you can imagine just typing visit in a search, uh, you can come up with all kinds of things. But if you type visit LLNL for Lawrence Livermore National Lab, it's typically the first one to, uh, to pop up there, and you can see it's a Lawrence Livermore uh, maintained code. Um, you know, not developed necessarily for groundwater flow models, but it is open source, freely available code, and I find it works pretty well for these type of animations. So I'm going to go through just real quickly using um, some some uh, Python scripts and and how to interact with uh, with visit and that. So I'm going to start by introducing another um, uh, Python tool called FlowPy, uh, put together by uh, by a few uh, several groundwater flow modelers, both within and outside of the USGS. <coughs> so again, if you just Google, you know, mod flow and flow pie. You can get either to the uh, the documentation page for that, or the uh, the GitHub uh, site for it. So all the source code is available on GitHub. So if you uh, if you have a GitHub account, um, you can you can clone the repo or simply just download a zip file of of all the the files that are available on that repo. And within that, if you go into the examples, there's some IPython notebooks in here. So essentially, I just started with this uh, FlowPy3 map example IPython notebook, and I kind of created another one. Again, I might, I might eventually push that to the, to the repo if, it, if it's accepted. But if we open that up, you could, you could do this starting from any of them. I mean, they, they begin just with testing some, um, uh, you know, setting up your, your environment a little bit to run, to run mod flow and setting up the directories to run this Freiburg model. Um, then of course you can run it. Uh, hopefully it'll it'll execute correctly and and you'll get the the, the simulated uh, output for that. And then we can move down here and you can actually use FlowPy to to visualize um, the simulated heads from that model as well. And there's examples of that in the uh, the FlowPy documentation. But here's just uh, real quick how to grab the uh, the output from that from that uh, model, get the data, and then plot it up using Matplotlib. So this gives us something to compare to uh, when we're looking at visit. So what, what we'll do, you know, is after we've run these, uh, you can come down here, you can actually use this numpy save method to save a binary copy of, of those heads out into just this numpy uh, array format. So we're going to give it a name, just Freiburg, Freiburg.mpy. Uh, this is the uh, the array that uh, we've extracted using FlowPy. So basically a one-line operation right there that saves it out to your disk. Um, this of course is going to save it you know in whatever directory you open your, your notebook from. So it should exist right here within your uh, you know if you open your IPython notebook within this examples slash notebooks directory um, that, that is in the, the FlowPy um, directory structure It'll exist right there. And again, that's binary, so you can open it up, but you can't really read it like that. A um, couple of other things just on this model, you see you know, the dimensions of it are kind of handy to have. So we're going to, to just extract those real quickly with a couple of lines here uh, from the uh, disc mod flow discretization file. And again, this ML uh, is defined further up here as the mod flow uh, model. But uh, we're going to extract the discretization, and then we're just going to print out the number of rows, the number of columns, and the uh, the dimensions, the, the delta R and delta C, the dimensions of those rows and columns, which in this case, uh, the model is 40 by 20, 40 rows, 20 columns, and each cell is 250 by 250, and whatever units those are. So, so at this point, we've ran this. Uh, we, we have some information here about the model. We've got this binary file. So here behind it, I have visit open. Um, so it's a little different than a lot of Windows uh, applications in that it actually does have two separate, uh, at least a couple of separate uh, uh, windows there. 
it's not all you know contained in one which can actually be kind of nice but uh, it takes some getting used to so we're just going to hit open um, I'm already set up to go right to our directory open uh, we can leave this to get file guest file from name extension uh, visit knows what these numpy files are natively so we've we've loaded that that binary numpy file into uh, into visit here but as you say it doesn't plot anything right away we actually have to add a plot and tell it exactly what we want to do so again there's a lot of different choices here you can actually do all you can you can plot you know vectors and, and images and and scatter plots and even molecules I've used that to uh, to plot up the earthquake epicenters and things like that but in this case typically I'll just use a pseudo color plot and so if we choose pseudo color comes up with this var this uh, this variable that it's reading from the uh, the numpy file so if we click that and just hit draw and it's not going to show a whole lot right um, so you know it kind of shows us this bounding box of our of our, our model area but but we don't see a whole lot so let's let's add a couple of things here first of all this is like a, a 2D um, uh, re reset the view there, sorry. Reset the view on that. If you just right click over in the window and click reset, it's going to center it for you. So again, we can compare this to our FlowPy output. So here it is in Matplotlib. Um, you know, here's some inactive areas. So you can see the model is, I think there's a river or a drain here. Um, seems like the red is the higher head and the low is a or the blue is a lower head, there might be a pumping well right here. So that's kind of our comparison image. I'll try to scoot that over a little bit. So it doesn't look exactly like it right away. So again, you know, the first thing we see is that it comes in and this thing is as wide as it is tall. It doesn't look at all like it does here in, in Matplotlib. So um, we know from, from FlowPy the dimensions of this thing. So we've got 40, ro 40 rows, 20 columns, and they're all 250 uh, units on the side each cell. So we can enter that into our transform. Basically we know we're going to scale it so we want our x-axis it's going to be 5,000 units wide and our y-axis is 10,000 units tall. Apply that boom so it, sh it's, it matches the dimensions that we see in, in uh, uh, Matplotlib over here. The next thing we see is, you know, here's these these red uh, red uh, corners up here. Well, in Matplotlib, they're on the opposite side. That's that's actually not incorrect as far as Visit is concerned. Visit works on more by default. It works on more of a Cartesian coordinate system, so it's expecting the x and y coordinate to be down here in the lower left, whereas ModFlow starts from the upper left. So Matplotlib. Uh, for whatever reason that works out, I think it's it, it flips it in and, and FlowPy. But when we export it to a NumPy array, it's it's inverted. That's also a pretty easy thing to take care of. So if we go back into our transforms, and this time we're going to choose a reflect. We're just going to reflect that thing. And if you double click the reflect operator, you know it comes up, and by default, <clears throat> it's going to add in two. Um, two dimensions to that. So if we just draw it, you can see it's mirrored. Um, we're going to remove that upper right quadrant and apply that. And dismiss that. So now um, our, our, our kind of uh, our orientation of the grid now matches what we see in Matplotlib. So the next thing we're looking at is here's our colors. So these are like inactive areas of the model. I don't know, maybe there's a you know, mountain on a couple of these places, whatever. But for whatever reason, we're not simulating the head in those areas in Matplotlib. Those are still showing up here because those are uh, they're either dry cells or inactive cells in ModFlow. So we want to carve those out uh, of our visit um, window as well. And we can do that by adding another operator. So we can just stack operators on top here. So we'll add a selection and we're going to use a threshold. And double click threshold. We can see from our legend here in visit, our upper end is 999. That's uh, you know that's going to be like an inactive cell or whatever. So essentially, we're going to put our upper bound just below that. I'll do 998. Apply that, and those go away. Now you still see some artifacts around this. Um, 
you know, that's just because, you know, it is interpolating between each of those cells. And in this case, it's only using part and range. So for this, I'm not going to go into the details of it, but we can we can choose show zone if, and we'll say all in range, and hit apply. And that's going to clean those up and look much more, much closer to what it does in, in my plot. Lab. So now it's all blue. Um, you know, how do we get this to look, look the same over there? I mean, our, our color ramp is still blue to red, but it's showing up all blue. So let's double click just the pseudo color in that. And now we've changed the plot around so that, you know, it was originally basing the color ramp on the original data was from, which was from like 10 up to 999. We've modified that. So now we don't want to use the original data. We want to use the current plot. Say current plot, apply, ta-da, so now we've actually got a nice color ramp that shows kind of this gradation. Now, you know, again, it's, it's kind of like, well, that's a lot of trouble just to show this. We can do the exact same thing in seconds uh, in an IPython notebook. And, and on top of that, even if you want to move it around, it does some kind of weird things like it's a 2D, you know, big deal. But at this point, it's a pretty easy step again. Um, if we want to mess with 3D, to go in here, actually, um, Visit doesn't recognize it as 3D yet. We'll add another operator. We're going to transform it again, and we want to elevate that. Quick draw. Again, it didn't really do anything, or it didn't appear to, <clears throat> but what that did is it, it basically informed it that this is a 3D data set. We want to be able to move that around in space. So if you just grab that now with your mouse, you can turn it around any direction you want to. Now it's flat, doesn't look real exciting, but we've already got this threshold or this uh, transform operator applied. So I'm gonna double click, open that back up. We already have the scale set in here where we've, we've uh, adjusted our X and Y dimensions. Now we can just adjust our Z dimensions as well. So we'll crank that up to about, uh, you know, vertical exaggeration about 75 and hit apply. And nothing happens. What's going on? It's still flat. That is because the order of these operators actually matter. See, we're transforming it at basically the very first thing, then we're reflecting, and then we apply a threshold, and then we're elevating it. What you want to do is move this elevator operator up here near the top to where that elevation uh, takes place uh, uh, first, and then you get all the rest of them. So when you do that, boom, then you get this kind of odd looking thing here. But, um, you can you, you can adjust for that as well so you can hold shift down and kind of move things around scroll in and out um, and, and and go in here you can even set the uh, the center of rotation you know so you it makes it easier to uh, to, to rotate that around and from there you can create some some cool animations particularly if you have a model with time series information uh, that shows drawdown, shows these cones of depression happening. If you have anything with time series, Visit will handle that by default, and you can see that even in these kind of VCR controls, stop, forward, rewind, things like that. So if this had been a model with uh, with uh, a time series of, of pumping and this water level change, uh, you can actually export the files and hit play and, and see that through time. And you can also interact with it through, through Python and generate some cool animations, which uh, hopefully I'll be able to do to do some other small snippets on that. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for someone. Um, you know, let me know what you use if you're using Visit. Let me know how that's going. Uh, any other 3D packages? There's a lot of them out there. A lot of cool stuff going on in groundwater. Um, but uh, you know, I get asked this from time to time, so I want to throw something out there. Thanks.